Kevin Wilbrook. I'm one of the application engineers here at CAD Dimensions. And today I want to talk about design simplification for large assemblies. That term, design simpl simplification, can mean many things. I'm focusing today on giving you a technique to simplify your designs ahead of time. Now, if you were to, to come to me tomorrow and say, I, Kevin, I have this very large assembly and it's slow. Uh, I, it's got 6,000 components. It takes 10 minutes to open up and I can barely pan, zoom, and rotate. These techniques are not very easy to go back and fix what's already been done. So my goal today is to give you some techniques and tools to approach creating better designs now. And that starts with simplification. Okay, so what we're going to cover today, I want to take a look at, first off, the file structure of a SOLIDWORKS file. We need to understand what's in there, what gets opened up, and how it gets opened up so that we can look at the simplification process maybe a little more analytically. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll focus on that to start with. I want to talk about really the beginning point, and that's your templates. Uh, I want to look at an example, a very, very simple example, but I want to look at, uh, you know, the whole cause and effect. If I do this, this is the expectation, what you might see, and how to look at that, and look at how and why it might be faster or slower. And then once we put in place my initial approach, and that isn't fast enough, what other simplification tools can I use? And we'll talk about what each of them are, what they do, and you might have seen these before, but it's it really is the next step. And as I mentioned initially, this conversation goes much, much further than what we're focusing on today. I'm really focusing on the starting point of when you create a part, what you do to create something that's further simplified and the approach that you take to do that and how to analyze it. But there are many, many, many other things that help you to make assemblies that are fast and efficient. From mating to uh, system options to um, you know materials to the image quality of each part. I mean, there's, there's a whole book that SOLIDWORKS publishes that you can purchase a uh, step-by-step step guide on large assembly performance. So, um, again, it goes much further than we're, what we're focusing on today. So let's start with the file structure of a SOLIDWORKS file. Different tools inside of SOLIDWORKS will get access to different portions of a SOLIDWORKS file, but in general, here's what the file is made up, there, made up of. There's a header that contains the file paths, the location where the file are, the references, of any files that it that it needs or pointing to, like an assembly, it has all the paths to the components that uh, that exist on the hard drive. But it also has visualization data. This is the graphics data that's used to be presented to the user when you perform a file open. You'll notice in SOLIDWORKS when you perform a file open, you see the image before you're ever able, able to do things like uh, editing a feature or anything like that, you're presented. It's because SOLIDWORKS gets to that visualization data, the graphics data first. There's an instruction set, which is essentially how to build the model. Keep in mind that's the step-by-step -step instructions on how to build that. Okay, uh, When it opens up, it's got to go through and, and rebuild that model essentially, go through that process. And it, it really is all database driven. Uh, this is SOLIDWORKS uses something called a single point database in their files. So the way that it organizes the information is in this, this database type structure. So this is going to become important when we, we talk about simplification process because we have different bits of information within the SOLIDWORKS file. Now, the first thing I want to talk about, it really relates to 2015. One of the 
uh, tools that really is affected most, or, or I'd say file open, affected most by the file size. Okay, the file size on disk, uh, moving it across the network to open it, uh, it affects the speed. SolidWorks 2015 uh, went through a major change in the instruction set of the file, the SolidWorks file. So we're just talking about the, the various portions of the SolidWorks file. Well, that structure changed a little bit in, in 2015, and they were able to gain considerable uh, size of a file. So here's the one thing I went kind of looking at this yesterday and say, okay, I, I need to, to give this group a, a good way to understand whether a file has been converted. So the first thing that I did is I took an assembly and I just opened it up in SolidWorks thinking, okay, if I hit save, that save all, it's going to save all the parts to 2015 and do the conversion. And what I noticed initially, the, the file size was 589 meg prior to 2015. After I did that file open and just saved the assembly in 2015, it was 584. So the conversion process doesn't happen. It doesn't seem to happen on the file open. So what I did is I went to my uh, task scheduler. Now let's go here. I'll just show you where your task scheduler is here. Now, if you go under all programs, SOLIDWORKS 2015, SOLIDWORKS tools, go to your task scheduler, um, you have the ability to convert files. When I say convert files, uh, I just give it a folder, a time to start it, and the software is going to open up each file, rebuild it, and save it in the current version. So here's my results that I got from that. Um, it was a 589 meg file. After it was opened and converted to 2015, it was 228 megs. So the first part of the simplification process almost absolutely should be, if you're on 2015, to get all the files converted to 2015 format. Okay, you should see a considerable uh, decrease in file size for a majority of the files. So, you know, just to give you a sense of what I was looking at here. So here's the uh, two folders. Here's the pre-folder. Uh, 871 files. It was 589 meg on disk. And here's the converted version, 871 files. And only, excuse me, 228 meg on disk. Uh, if you look at, you know, some things that were, you know, not so obvious here, but the assembly was 26 meg before the conversion. After the conversion, it ends up being 24. So not on the whole lot, but at the part level, parts that might have configurations, um, those definitely decrease considerably through this process. So I would... Uh, go through the conversion process if you're using 2015. If you're using EPDM, uh, check with your admin. There's a utility to do it in EPDM as well. Now, you're going to get reduced opening times. Why? Because it's opening a smaller file. It's not having to pull as much information across the network. The file sizes are smaller. Okay, so this is kind of the starting point um, for creating at least some inefficient SOLIDWORKS assembly. Now, the next part of that process that I'm proposing today is really to take a look at your templates. Now, this is where you start every day. When I create a part, I start a new part template, I start to create my geometry, and I move on. Whether I create that part in an assembly or by itself, it doesn't matter. You still start with parts, part and assembly templates. So let's go to just SOLIDWORKS for a moment. And here's why I'm having this conversation about templates. The simplification process really begins at the part level. 
Now what I've done here is I've just taken an assembly that's, uh, let's see, uh, 35 components. And I went through the process of simplifying those components. Now this is takes a while after the fact. Somebody handed me this model. I had to go to each model and create a simplified version. How did I do that? Well, I simply just opened up the file itself. I go to the configuration manager. And I used my own terminology here, but you can see I have one configuration I call the full and one I call simplified, which has removed some of the geometry that I don't want in that particular configuration. Now, why do I simplify something? Because as I move it up and put it in other assemblies, more complex upper level assemblies, I don't need the level of detail. Now, how do I simplify it? For those of you who are not familiar with the process of suppressing, I just go find the feature that I don't want, right click on it and suppress that particular feature. By doing that with the parts themselves, you create simplified versions of each part. So my conversation with templates is really revolving around this. Why not create that simplified version when you create the part initially? Okay, so what you might do is let's say we start with a, a new part. Uh, and I'll just pick any of my templates here. I want to create a new template in SolidWorks that already has those configurations listed for me. So taking a brand new part, your existing templates today, go to your configuration manager, and we'll call the default configuration full or complete or whatever term you want to use. Then go ahead and add a configuration to this template. Call this simple or simplified. Okay, something easy that everyone will remember to use. Okay, and we'll store that also in the configurations. Now, you want to make sure you activate the full configuration. And then all you have to do is save this as a template. When I save this as a part template, I'm going to have the ability to save it in my templates folder under any name. Now, I actually named mine Large Assembly PRTDOT. So that's my part template. So now what happens is when I go ahead and do a file new, I can grab my Large Assembly template, and you can see I have the two configurations, Simplified and Full Feature. The intention of this is, is really this. As you're going through and you're creating geometry, you're going to do everything normally. You're going to go ahead and, and extrude and create parts exactly as you would. But when it gets to the point where you have features that maybe aren't necessary working your way up the feature tree, um, you're going to just jump just as you get ready to save this. You're just going to go to the simplified version of this model and you're going to, in this case, make sure that that particular feature does not exist in the simplified version. Now you'll notice I had a little bit of an issue that when I added the features to the full version, they did not show up, neither of them, in the simplified. And that can be corrected very simply. Uh, go to the simplified configuration in the template, go to the properties, and turn off this advanced option that says suppress features. What this means is any features added to another configuration, by default we're getting suppressed in here, and this will make sure that that doesn't happen. So let me just show you. So let's say I added uh, another little hole in here that we wouldn't see at the upper level assembly. Okay, it's a very, very small hole. I go ahead and create it here. It should show up in here now. All I have to do is go to the configuration simplified just before I save and just suppress the few things that I don't need. Okay, so by saving that in the template, 
you've already got that configuration created. Before your final save, you just jump over to the simplified config, you remove, remove a few features, and you save the part. Okay? What I don't want to suggest, however, is that each time now you start building assemblies, sub-assemblies, and each level you have to do the same thing, is to create these simplified versions all along the way. So I'm going to show you a technique for getting access to those simplified versions very quickly. So let's say we built an assembly now, 35 parts, and every one of those 35 parts I have a simplified version. I've removed some of the detail maybe I don't need at an upper level. Now when I perform a file open, in the file open dialog, everyone's familiar with the pull down menus here, different methods for opening a SOLIDWORKS file. One of them is kind of hidden in here. If you pull down the menu for configurations, you'll find both the full and simplified versions of this particular assembly, but you'll also find an advanced function. Okay? Uh, if I select advanced and, and then go to the open dialog, I'm going to get another dialog. So this allows me just different ways of accessing each individual part. So the first option is just, just telling the software open the, what I had selected for a configuration. Sometimes you might want to open up just showing the structure of the assembly. Sometimes you want to open it up showing all referenced models. But the one I want to do is I want to open up each part. And when it looks and opens each part, I want it to look into the part to see if there's a configuration called simplified available to me. And when I say OK to this, it's now opening the upper level of this. And you'll notice in the feature tree that each of the components, assemblies and sub-assemblies, have simplified versions open. Okay, the software is able to go in and retrieve that. Now we have a question that I think uh, pertains to what we're doing here. Will you still gain all the file size savings if your simplified configuration is a derived configuration of the full feature? Yes, and I'll explain to you why here in just a moment. Um, we need a way of looking at what, what have I actually gained by simplifying this thing, right? Right now I'm just telling you simplify, simplify, simplify. Um, first of all, the file size itself uh, isn't going to be affected a whole lot by simplification. There's really two things that we look at with simplification, and I'll show you here in just a second. So here's my uh, air source mouthpiece opened up and simplified. I do have uh, a simplified version and a full version of this assembly. Um, let me just close this because I don't want to save it. Um, the full version has all the threads, has all the detail that you can imagine for each of these files. And if I just uh, cross-section this thing a little bit, you can get a sense of of what we're looking at. Some of the threads on a lot of the components, these are all helical threads. All the detail that you might want uh, is all there in the full version, but if we go to the simplified version, you can see that the thread details are removed, uh, fillets, small fillets are removed. So how do we quantify what it is that we've just done? Okay. Now, I mentioned this type of simplification isn't necessarily going to decrease the file size. Converting the files will, but this isn't going to decrease the file size. So if we can't decrease the file size, what else are we worried about? So there's two things that we're worried about that help us in the simplification process. One is the file rebuild time. When I open up that file and I do a rebuild, um, how, how long does it take to recalculate these features? If you make a change, how long does it take to recalculate? Well, if it doesn't have to recalculate text, 
in threads, in small fillets with, on lots of edges, it's going to be faster. So just that bit of simplification gains you the speed while working inside of SOLIDWORKS. Now the part that people ignore the most, and I think has the, the most effect on speed in a lot of cases, is the hit to the graphics card. So how do we quantify the difference between a simplified version and a full version and how hard it's utilizing the graphics card? Well, there's a tool inside of SOLIDWORKS under the Tools menu called Assembly Visualization. And if you've been attending Lunch and Learns, this is one of my favorite tools. I use it for custom properties. I use it to uh, look and make sure all my information's for a bill of materials. But in here, I have a couple different tools that I can utilize that help me to understand how the graphics card and the rebuild time are affected by my simplification. So what this is, uh, is just a, a method of organizing all the components in the assembly and reporting on a quantity. In this case, I'm reporting on something we call graphics triangles. Now, graphics triangles uh, can be directly correlated to the amount of graphics intensity required to create that within the graphics window. Now, each of these headers, you can click on them. It will sort by size. So you can see which component takes the most amount of graphics usage to create. Now, I'm in the simplified version right now. You can see the regulator body is, is taking the most hit of over 10,666 triangles to create that graphically. Now, how do I add this graphics triangles uh, menu here, this pull down? Well, what we can do is see this little arrow to the right here? Here's where we can change what's being reported here. Now, when you open up your visualization, graphics triangles is not going to be listed. What you're going to do is come down here to the uh, where we select the, what we're reporting on and go to More. And in here, you can grab other custom properties that you want to report on. And in here, you'll see graphics triangles. Okay? So that's the first thing. Make sure you add graphics triangles. The other thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and add a column because I want to report on SOLIDWORKS rebuild time. So that is also in here under more. I can look at the SOLIDWORKS rebuild time. Okay. So once I have rebuild time, I can also sort on that and I can find the fi find again what the rebuild time of that particular component happens to be. Now remember, we simplify it, we're reducing rebuild times on, on these components, so I'm able to make some changes and, and, and maybe reduce that rebuild time. So this is the simplified version. You can see that gra our graphics hit, we have about 10,000 triangles. Really, I haven't given you any way of really quantifying that yet, but let's compare it to the full version that has all the threads, all the detail, all that information. If I go back to my assembly visualization, you can see I now have three components that are well over 10,000 triangles. The overmold itself, just by adding these little ribs here, it jumped up almost double the amount of graphics needed to handle that part itself. And you can see a majority of the parts are using a lot more triangles than we had before. We could also go on through the rebuild times and see the differences between the components and which ones. I know this overmold wasn't at the top before. Okay, now it's taking 3.4 seconds to rebuild that overmold. Well, if you have 10 components that are like that, and they need to be rebuilt upon open because of a change, well, do the math. There's 30 seconds right there. Okay, so all of this stuff 
adds up along the way. This is a way of kind of getting a look at what's really going on here. Now, I want to take, again, try to take this and give you something to, to kind of take back and to think about. I've only fed you graphics triangles at this point. Let's close this down and try to make something that makes a little more sense here. If I do a file open now, I've created two assemblies. A large assembly using that same subassembly that has the full version, the full featured version of that subassembly patterned many, many times. And then I've done the same for the simple version. So watch when I do a file open. Okay, it, it rebuilds the parts pretty quickly, but watch in the status bar, it says generating graphics, generating graphics, generating graphics. It takes longer to generate the graphics. You can see it's still waiting on this assembly. Okay, why? Because I have more graphics triangles, more detail, more level of detail in each component that I've got to calculate. Now think about that for a second. When else does it have to calculate that? Watch, watch me try to rotate this thing, if I can rotate it very efficiently. Right now it does, but as soon as I stop, waiting, 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 boom. Okay? Depending on what you're doing, this thing might come to almost a halt. Now I've got a decent video card. I've got a, you know, a, a mobile NVIDIA Quadro card, kind of a middle of the road laptop card here and you can see that you know I'm trying to rotate here there's lag and that's all because of the graphics side of it now I wasn't able to create an assembly that had a slow rebuild time uh, simply because going back and showing an existing assembly with, with a simplified and a full version would take too long. So this is how I chose to kind of illustrate this to you. So let's take a look at the simplified version once this thing rebuilds itself here. This is taking a, a quite a big graphics hit just to do that. So if I do the same file open on the simplified version here, again, I'm using no trickery in the back end. Everything's fully resolved, no extra configurations. I just have simplified versions of each in there. You can see it rebuilds the parts, generates graphics. It still has a section because it has graphics to generate, and I'm here. Now, if you try to quantify the time I did it, it was between 8 seconds for the simplified and almost 20 seconds for the full version. Now, keep in mind, I'm only using 35 unique parts. What if I have 300, 3,000? Okay, all of this will add up within the interface. And you can see I can pan, zoom, rotate this thing at will. Okay? So my recommendation is this. Start at the part level. Simplify, even if you'll never use the simplification, it's there. You will never be able to put the resources to go back and simplify every component to make a large assembly faster. Even this subassembly probably took me two hours to create simplified versions of every component in this subassembly, make decisions about what's there and what's not. If you do it when you create the part, it's so much faster, so much faster, okay? All right. So we looked at the uh, cause and effect here, uh, the graphics hit, use the large assembly visual, uh, visualization tool to look at the graphics triangle, see how you're helping yourself. You know, maybe, you, uh, and here's one just to test it out. Take a, take a fastener or anything with, with helical threads and create a simplified version and a full version and look at the difference in the graphics triangles needed it's uh, it's quite the telling story. Um, not to mention the rebuild time on a helical thread. Again, all these things are just gonna gonna hurt you a little bit. Uh, we talked about the open times, the converting the file. Uh, getting the file converted is going to help you to uh, open up less data. Okay, um, it decrease those file sizes. 
you know, the question really is, what do you do when you hit the wall? And in a lot of cases, I believe the customers either, you know, give a call to CAD Dimensions Tech Support, say my assembly's slow, or they just look at trying to get different hardware, newer hardware. My hardware isn't fast enough. When the reality is um, they need to look at these techniques, okay? So what happens when you need to simplify the assembly even further? Because I just didn't want to end the conversation with, hey, here's a technique and, and go. Because SOLIDWORKS does have further tools uh, to aid in the simplification process. Um, I do believe that in order to have a proper process, you have to start the way that I showed you. You have to create simplified reps. Uh, in order to have this conversation even further, we've got to look at the SOLIDWORKS file types. And we've got to look at the types of information that's in them. Because really that's where we get the gain in speed, right? We've got to choose not to load certain bits of information. Or SOLIDWORKS itself has to load things fast, faster, right? And they do things release to release to, to do faster, better. But if we're going to affect it, we've got to look at what's getting loaded. So in the part file, we've got all sorts of things in the part file. We've got reference geometry, sketches, dimensions, relationships. We might have links to external library features. At the assembly level, I mean, you can go a lot further with your uh, in-context features and the way that you do complex patterns and reference other components or build components inside of an assembly. And on a drawing, you have, you know, all your detail work. So how do we, I'm focusing really on part and assembly here because that's our conversation today, but how do we simplify it even further using SOLIDWORKS tools, tools that SOLIDWORKS has given us to make it easier? Now I'm going to outline just three tools here uh, and talk about what it's really doing as it relates to this simplification process. So the first one is large design review. Uh, LDR for short is used specifically for reviewing CAD models. When I say review, th this is best used when, you know, somebody comes to your desk and says, hey, can you just open up that model and, and show him this portion? You know, show him how this works or what this looks like. And if you have a large assembly and it, it's rebuild time and it's graphics hits are real slow, um, you know, that could take some time, and it's really embarrassing. So you're going to use large design review. Things you can do in large design review, you can navigate the assembly tree. You can measure from it, cross-section, hide and show components, or even create walkthroughs. But that's really the limit to this tool. Okay? Uh, let's jump to SOLIDWORKS for a moment. And... To activate your LDR, your large design review, you find the SOLIDWORKS model. And then under the mode in the file open dialog, you'll find large design review. So let's go back to our conversation about the SOLIDWORKS file structure. Well, in the header of the file is the graphics information from the file. In this case, large design review loads the graphics data so it doesn't load all the rest of that information what you won't see is the features the mates all that stuff it's getting the graphics now there's a propensity uh, that depending on how you change file that the graphics contained within a file may be out of date so for instance you may have updated a part and its graphics aren't uh, up to date in an assembly or a sub-assembly or there's some, some problems with the graphics. This system will actually show you if there are issues. So if I say open to this, it gives you a nice little message saying, hey, you know, you're going to be limited. Here's the things you're going to be limited in doing. Once you say OK, it even this particular assembly tells me, hey, this is an old format. 
If you're going to trust all these graphics, you really need to convert it to a new format, a la 2015. Currently, it's opened in review mode, and no changes can be saved. So it's I'm even limited in some sense there. But you can see it opens the assembly. It opens it very, very quickly. Um, if I wanted to kind of get in a sense of what I'm looking at here, this is about 6,000 components with about 3,000 unique components. Uh, let's see. Notice I cannot get to assembly visualization because I can't calculate triangles or rebuild times or any of that while in here. But this is the graphics that represents this assembly. I can pan, zoom, rotate. If I look at the feature tree, um, I can see the structure, but I can't get to any of the features or none of that. Okay. Um, if there are out-of-date models and it knows they're out-of-date, the symbols in the large design review will show in a different color and you'll have to open it up, fully resolve, rebuild it, save it in order to go ahead and do that. Uh, although there is some utilities in here to update the component graphics, which is essentially loading the model, opening the graphics, the current graphics for the model. <laughs> so it does, does some loading of it. But keep in mind, this is just graphics. So when we talk about further simplification, depending on what you're trying to do, this is one method uh, to go ahead and do that large design review. Now from here, you can go ahead and open it all lightweight or open it resolved. You can hide show components. You can take pictures, section, create walkthroughs. So there is a, a nice little toolbar so that you can perform some actions, which is great for review. Okay, so that's kind of one of those tools that SOLIDWORKS lets you go a little bit further with for simplification. Now, lightweight mode is kind of the next step, and this has been around for years. And I think, um, I think that this, just understanding what it's doing can be helpful. Um, there are issues. We all, anybody who's used Lightweight before knows that you have to be cognizant of whether you load it resolve before the save, whether your tables update. You know, there's certain things that just don't work perfectly. But when you're talking about loading portions of a large assembly even more simplified than what our initial discussion is, this is the way that you're going to go. Okay, so lightweight mode uh, opens a subset of the model data. And what that subset really is is something they call the BREP data. The BREP data is the boundary representation of the model. So think of it as the the dumb solid portion of the of SOLIDWORKS. So it, it, it's not worried about all the feature history and all the other stuff around it. It's the boundary of the CAD data, uh, but it's more than the graphics data. It's more than the graphics data. It's not this out-of-date large design review. I can do things like getting mass properties and section and dimension and those types of things that I can't do on a graphics model. Okay, so it, it's a little bit different than maybe uh, what we're used to here. So how do I do that? Most of you probably have seen or, or have used this before. Um, if I decide to open something in uh, this lightweight mode, turn on my assembly here. Okay, and I can pick any of these assemblies. In this case, let's do this one here. Set it to lightweight and the software is going to go ahead and load that assembly in lightweight mode. Um, lightweight, if something is loaded lightweight, you'll see the feather on it. If it does not load it lightweight, it had to load it in to do some updates, but you can certainly uh, set it to lightweight after it's loaded. In this case, the file needed to be saved in order to be set to lightweight. And you can see when I set to lightweight that it asks, hey, You've modified the document to the current release. Do you want to modify it and then reset it to lightweight? But if I expand any of these components here, you'll see that I don't have any features listed at the component level. So I have the full boundary of what the component is, 
what it looks like. I can isolate the component. I can uh, section the component. I can put dimensions on a component, but I just don't have the features. Now, when I mentioned uh, the, I won't call them issues, but the, the little quirky things with lightweight mode that you may think something is fully resolved or a table's updated, all you really do with lightweight mode is you use it as a working area, uh, a working mode. And when you're done with the assembly, you're going to load it fully resolved. So you're going to right-click, set lightweight to resolved. What this does is it allows everything you've done to fully update all the tables, all the features, the geometry, everything. And then you save it. And the next time you open it up, you open it up lightweight. And you work in this subset, this boundary representation of data. Okay? So that's another tool that uh, SOLIDWORKS provides to simplify the process um, outside of what we outlined initially. And the last one is this speed pack. Now this one is very different than the other two as well. So what speed pack is, is it creates a simplified configuration. It will certainly reduce the memory usage when you're using a simplified configuration, a speed pack configuration. But here's one thing is that your file size may increase just slightly because it has to create a new configuration. You should use this when inserting a complex assembly into a higher level assembly. So let's uh, talk a little bit about this. Let's uh, open up a sub-assembly here. Okay, so here's a sub-assembly, and you've probably seen this data set here. Uh, we've used it for quite a few years, but I want to create a configuration that only contains the information that I need in the next assembly level, going much further with simplification than we've been able to do so far. All I have to do is at the Configuration Manager, right-click on the configuration, and select add speed pack. Now this speed pack allows you to determine which components and faces are included in the configuration. Now this is where it gets different than what we've been talking about. I can now include faces on different models. So if I wanted this face off this model, maybe the holes themselves, I can pick those to be included, but then maybe there's a component that I want to be included, maybe this housing here. So it's not like creating a configuration where you're hiding and showing certain components. It's now creating a specialized configuration that has only those things in it. And that's why I mentioned that the file size may increase slightly, it is slightly. I've done some testing. It's not much. But what you gain in your um, memory usage on your system uh, will, will more than make up for any file size changes. So once I've done this, um, you'll notice on my cursor I have this uh, speed pack graphics circle. What this does is it actually shows me what's loaded. Uh, into memory. You can see only those surfaces are loaded and that component is loaded. And there is an option in the system options to turn off this graphic circle. But what this is going to allow me to do now uh, is place this in an upper level assembly, okay, just by using my insert component command. Select the component. Maybe I want to rotate it around the Y a couple spots place it in the assembly. It looks like I'm placing the whole thing, doesn't it? Well, in reality, my graphic circle is here. Only thing I really have loaded, so I've reduced my memory usage, is the surfaces and the components that I specified. So now I can say, take this face, and we're going to mate it to this face, make it coincident. Okay, I can start to, I should flip that. Yeah, where'd it go? 
<laughs> somewhere in there. Uh, let's just undo, figure out where it is. There it is. So you can only use the pieces that you have loaded. So my memory usage right now is greatly reduced, but if I look at the speed pack version, you can see I can't see all the components. The nice thing about speed pack, it's, it's simplified, maybe oversimplifying it, but I can also uh, load the full version at any time. So there's a set speed pack to parent option that will automatically load the full version. Okay, so now I have all the files associated with that subassembly. Okay, so that, that kind of helps us in the simplification process. Uh, so it's kind of, it's, it's kind of in between lightweight and graphics only because we're loading some of the boundary information we're loading some of the graphics information. We're kind of mixing the two with speed pack and you're controlling what gets loaded. So I hope that uh, the conversation was beneficial. I wanted to give some starting point. If you want to talk further about your approach or your files, feel free to hit me up at Kevin at CADDimensions.com. My recommendations are this. Just start today with templates. Go take your templates, create a simplified version of them, and every time you create a part, just get into the habit of making a simplified version of that part. You never know when you're going to need it. You have tools like that file open in advance that will open all the simplified versions and make it easy for you to do that. There's that, that old myth, 21 days to form a habit. I think they proved that uh, everyone's brain is different. It's not exactly 21 days. But, but you know, if you do it for several weeks, you should be able to uh, get used to doing it. It becomes part of that daily process. And I don't think it's going to affect your time frame very much, if at all. Okay, so I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, I do have a, one other questions here. Uh, we have concerns that people will save the files in, a, in the simplified versions, and then when they open the files to modify them, they will modify the wrong config. Does using derived config help with that, or do you have a best practice? See, you're still going to have that uh, user interaction because the last active configuration um, is going to be the one that's active at the last save. So you're still going to have to to flip between them. However, well, when you do a file open, you can choose which configurations get loaded, but it's still going to require a user to pay attention to the configurations that are loaded. So um, that is still going to be a valid concern. Um, two sides to that, if, if your user base is seeing speed issues, you may be able to convince them if we simplify it enough to understand uh, configurations uh, to be able to load the simplified in full um, to take away some of that pain and speed, uh, the effort that it takes to work with a large assembly. So I, I'm, I don't have a magic button for that. Best practice uh, is really going to be just to teach them a little bit more about what you're trying to do with simplified representations of those. So I want to thank you for coming today. If there's any more questions, post them. Uh, this is recorded. It will be posted on our YouTube channel probably before the end of the day today. And uh, I want to thank you for attending and hopefully we see you again soon. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.